<clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description. I do the leak code premium problems on my Patreon and join my Discord, please. This problem is called Max Consecutive Ones Number Three. We already did number one. Number two is Patreon, so uh, check that out if you want. This is given an array of zeros and ones only. So the array we're given is only zeros and ones. We can change up to k values from zero to one. So we are given an integer k, so two. So we can change two zeros to ones. So we could change this zero to a one or this zero to one, but only two, up to two. Return the length of the longest contiguous, meaning next to each other elements, uh, subarray that contains only ones. So we want the longest subarray that contains only ones within this, and it has to be contiguous touching ones. And also we could change any zeros to into ones. So the longest in this case is right here. It shows you right here. Um, right, the underlined ones right here. So we could change up to two zeros to ones. So what we did is we changed this zero in this zero to get a length of size six here. Um, compared to over here, it would have just been five. So yeah, um, how do we do this? So it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple. It's uh, it's a sliding window approach. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but basically you have pointers uh, to the beginning of a window and the end of a window and you move it across and we're going to keep that exact distance, and we're going to, you know, the distance between the pointers is going to be, so the, when we end up, when we end, the second pointer would be at the end of the array, and the first pointer would be here, and it'll just mark the distance of what we need, and we'll return that, um, you know, the, the, lar the later on pointer minus the first pointer, second pointer minus the first pointer, that distance is what we're going to be returning, and we're going to move it along, and the idea is we're going to move it, so we'll have our first pointer go out, just adventure through the array, and when we hit a zero, we will decrement k. So we'll just decrement k. We'll say we have two zeros to go. So once we get to this point, we'll just keep decrementing k. We'll go into the negatives, but we'll be moving j along. Once we're in the negatives, we'll start moving j along as well, the second pointer. Let's just start coding it out. Uh, we're going to have two pointers. So you could have a point. We'll just call it i and j. So I'm going to say... Uh, i is equal to zero and j is equal to zero and then i is going to traverse the array so we'll say well i is less than a dot length and i is going to be incrementing the whole time it's going to go through the array and i is going to be the second the pointer that goes farther the first you know what i mean the pointer that gets to the end of the array j is going to keep track of the beginning of our sliding window so we're going to be returning i minus j now Here's, here's how we do it. Okay, if a of i is equal to a zero, we're gonna decrement k, that's bad. If k is less than zero, we're gonna be decrementing zero no matter what. If we see three zeros and we only have two k, we're gonna keep decrementing, it'll be negative. So if k is less than zero, what do we do? Well, if k is less than zero, we're gonna start to increment j. We're gonna start to move our sliding window, right? Because we get to this length, we ran out of zeros. We're only at five, but this isn't our answer. So we gotta explore the rest still. So we're gonna move I along, but we're gonna start moving our second pointer along with it and move our sliding window to this point and move our sliding window to this point and move our sliding window to this point. Just keep moving our sliding window across until we find some z more zeros at J. Cause once we find zeros at the front, what we can do is, okay, if a of j, our first pointer, if the beginning of our window is equal to a zero, we can now start adding on zeros because we're removing them from the sliding window, if that makes sense. You know, you have you have them in, they're here, right? This is it. That This is the limitation on the number of zeros we can use too. But as we move our sliding window, once it goes negative and we're here, as we move our sliding window across, we keep going, keep going. And once we find them at the beginning, we're removing them. So we could start, it, it's negative one. There's negative one zeros right now because we don't have three. But once we get here, okay, now we're back up to zero zeros we have. Okay, now we have one zero left. Okay. And you know what I mean? You keep adding them and then um, eventually it's like, you know what I mean? You're in the positive again, right? These two 
are back on, and then you still have one to spare. You have one to spare when you're at this point, and then you just add it on at the end, right? So, um, yeah, that's basically it. I mean, that's the whole problem, I'm pretty sure. So, uh, yeah, that was it. So, yeah, that's the approach. It's pretty easy. Maybe you could do a for loop if you want to. You could write it a, re a little bit differently. The way they write it in the solution makes it hard to understand. They don't have a solution in the discussion. The most upvoted ones make it hard to understand. I tried to lay it out and explain it well, but uh, they do it more like this. They do uh, if k is less than 0 and a of j++ plus plus equals 0, then they just, you know, they kind of handle it all in one step to make it, you know what I mean? Like, look how neat it looks when they do it like this. It looks a lot more simple, you know what I mean? Like, look, look how many lines we just erased. But you do have to understand that this is kind of fancy and, you know, makes it hard. When you really look at it, it looks cleaner, but it's not because this is a little bit fancier. Because what it means is it's executing J++ even if the condition is just getting checked. The condition doesn't even have to get matched. Um, so that's why it's a little bit confusing. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what um what you want to see next comment below comment on any questions and uh yeah that's it so uh, i'll see you guys in the next video